So we'll go ahead and call this inaugural Zoom video conferencing meeting of the Board of Finance to order at 7.01 with, um, I know Kelly's here, so um, everybody's present except for Jeff, Kelly. Okay. And can you see the agenda on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So our first item is public comment. And and before before I open it to public comment, I just want to say that um, we do have people calling in via telephone and things can get kind of confusing. So before anyone, including any of the board members, speak I'll later on when we get into the agenda. We're getting feedback from you, Natalie. Your name before you speak, okay? Um, so, the public, any members of the public? Okay, is it okay now? Better now. Yeah. Didn't, we didn't hear most of what you said. Okay. On the public comment, um, I welcome public comment. If you can limit your comments to an agenda item, and Jim has put the agenda in front of you, and to uh, one or two minutes. Of, I know we've got a lot of people here, and we want to give everybody a chance to speak. Okay, so I couldn't understand that. I have a public comment. Okay, if you can hold on for just one minute, I'm going to go, I got to get to the um, gallery view, Jim. Yeah. Can I see that? Do I, can I control that? Yeah, you, you can control that on yours. Okay. Okay, so we have a lot of members of the public here, and I think what we'll do first is, um, what else? I guess we can go ahead and open it to whoever, um, but if you want to raise your hand electronically and, and get in the queue, we have a lot of comments, but um, and I'm also going to I hold on. Well, hold on. If you want to speak, please. Um, how about in the chat? Anybody who wants to speak, um, make an entry in the chat. Okay, and I'll call on you from there. Um, and then if you're on the phone, you can't chat. We'll do you afterwards. Okay. So anybody on Zoom that wants to speak as part of the public hearing, please put a note in the chat. I would like to speak. Can you hear me? You can just hold one minute. I've asked first for people to who are on Zoom to put a note in the in the public comment if they'd want to speak. So I don't see anybody, so you may you may go ahead. Please identify yourself first. Okay, so I, put, I want to speak in the public comments there. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so this is Paul Calabon from Fifty Hills Road. I'm going to be brief and to the point Thanks for the opportunity to comment here. I'm glad you guys are, uh, are doing this to get uh, town folks input. Um, I know these are difficult times. My condolences first and foremost to anyone who has suffered a loss uh, in this pandemic, and my heart goes out to everybody to who is helping out family, friends, and neighbors. Um, one thing I want to say is I believe the town has a unique opportunity to help residents during this event. This is not business as usual. The economic impact of this event is touching almost everyone that we know. As the board, it is paramount that the members focus on those being impacted, those without jobs, those without means to pay for services, those who have no additional sources of income to weather this crisis. Um, it's time to buckle down, stave off tax increases, and focus on how we can minimize the economic impact over the next year and probably longer uh, than that. So here, 
here are just my suggestions for what you guys are going to discuss tonight. Um, number one is stop all capital projects that are absolutely essential. Uh, I know we did a $9 million bond, but we do not have to spend that money or take out loans or projects that have not yet started. Uh, times have changed. We should move not forward with the road repairs, additional improvements to town buildings or facilities, and if possible, refinance any loans that we may have outstanding to date at a lower interest rate. Uh, second, I would ask that all departments create a zero budget increase. Uh, the current 2% suggestion increases for BOB and BOM should be thrown out. Let the residents see what this would uh, custom services would be based on a zero based budget and then vote on that. Uh, this is the only sane thing for you guys to do given the circumstances. This is what Granby has proposed to their residents just as of yesterday. Um, I suggest that we do the same. Uh, we should have a full-time person looking at federal and state assistance programs now and I'm certain that we must be saving money from layoffs on non-essential staff at the town, library parks, and rent, et cetera. If these non-essential staff are still drawing salaries, it's time to lay them off. And as every other business is doing this, um, there are federal benefits and programs available for these folks. We should not be carrying that debt burden uh, ourselves. Uh, all facilities in the town not in you should be shuttered, no utilities, no non-essential services like landscaping, custodial, trash pickup. These contracts should be suspended. The community center and the library should be completely shut down. Any town employee should be, again, laid off like every other business in the town is doing. Um, public safety and should be a priority given those departments. Uh, for what they need, but determine first if there are uh, grants available for those because there are a lot of grants now available for towns, public safety, and also for schools. Uh, and I would strongly suggest the BOE examine what the impact would be for not returning to school until spring of next year and see what that budget scenario looks like. Uh, and they should certainly hold off on hiring a new superintendent until we have a, a better idea of what's really going to happen in that arena. So those are my comments. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to make a comment on an agenda item before we uh, move on? Okay. I don't see anything in the chat and I don't hear anyone. So um, let's move on to the uh, first agenda in which I just have an update on the town and the Board of Ed's response to the pandemic. I just wanted to give the Northman and the Board of Ed an opportunity to speak for a minute or two just to update us on, um, on what they've been doing. Uh, Jim, Jim, do you want to start for the yeah, town? Yeah, um, just give me a second here. So, Natalie, just real quick, there was someone in the chat who also had a question. I don't know if it's too late to move past public comment. Um, oh, gosh, I didn't see that. Um, to ask about, sure, Lisa, did you, do you want to make a comment? It should be related to an agenda item, which could include the upcoming budget. Yeah, I'm just trying to that the shared window with the agenda in it, but all I'm seeing is videos of everyone's faces. Yeah, because I took it down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me put it back up if you'd like. Back. Um, yeah. I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah. 
So is there something in particular I can be um, curious about? I, I, or? I, yeah, I, I saw something on there about, um, there was like a, it said something about COVID sure. response and we were issued yeah. something from the Director of Pupil Services today saying that parents of children with IEPs, um, like that PPTs would not be taking place during the, the shutdown of the school. And I, I mean, it says that we'll, we'll have some services, but it's really, it wasn't um, very clear in what was exactly going to happen. And the, I mean, what I'm seeing on the news, the, the governor mentioned something about school could be closed through the end of the year, which I don't think is necessarily unrealistic with um, what's going on. And having having a child with it with an IEP I, I would like to know what the if, is that part of you know the update on the response to COVID as it relates to education mm -hmm. and um, what what will the school be doing I mean I believe we have a right to request virtual PPTs and I had planned to do that I wasn't planning to just forgo that <laughs> until school comes back to session. Yeah. Okay well this is the meeting of the Board of Finance um, if the Board of Ed is prepared to address that um, briefly during their their update. They will, and if okay. not, I'm sure they'll be um, you know reach out to the Board of Ed directly. Okay. Um, that would be great. So, sure. um, Jim, do you want to go ahead, or do you want the Board of Ed to start? No, that's fine. I'll start. The okay. uh, so the update at this point is is that um, all activities uh, pretty much throughout uh, the town related to Park and Rec uh, and the schools. Uh, social services and senior services except for emergency or medication for seniors is halted uh, there was a declaration of, uh, of emergency that was approved by the board of selectmen at our last meeting and uh, we also um, approved uh, the um, opportunity for the board of finance to change the dates uh, upcoming dates of the budget um, which will be is on the agenda and we'll be talked about. Uh, at this point, uh, there are two um, cases in East Granby uh, of folks that have tested positive. And at this point, uh, that, that's where we are from, from that part. Overall, I mean, every day it seems like I'm on a conference call with, um, with whether it's the state or the governor or other folks. And so there's really good communication going on. Uh, at the governmental level at this point. And um, that's basically what I have to share at this point. Okay, thank you very much. And on behalf of the Board of Ed, I'm not sure who will be speaking. Hi, Natalie. Uh, I think Missy's going to speak. Uh, like Jim said, there's lots of communications going on and things are changing rapidly. I spoke with her this afternoon, but because things are changing so rapidly, if Missy's on, I'll let her bring uh, an update on her response. Missy, are you there? I am here. Yeah. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Missy Bavaro, Acting Superintendent. We are in our day seven of the distant learning plan. There are many meetings throughout the day. If your phones are not muted, you might want to do that because I think it, it run inter runs interference. Um, there are many meetings throughout the day with various groups across all levels. Administratively, uh, we are meeting once, twice a day, and then we do grade level meetings, faculty meetings. Um, as uh, Jim said, we are receiving constant updates uh, through regular governor conference calls as well as the education uh, commissioner conference calls as well. We have dispersed uh, Chromebooks to students in need and are still identifying any families in need. So as we realize there might be another family who needs an additional uh, Chromebook or device, and we're also trying to assist with uh, Wi-Fi uh, accessibility as well. Um, at this point, we are out um, of the schoolhouse through April 20th. We are waiting for additional guidance in regards to attendance graduation requirements, and also grades. There are districts and as a state looking at some pass-fail options for um, second semester classes. 
We are constantly receiving uh, feedback from parents, staff, and students, and we are adjusting our program accordingly to best serve the students and parents. This distant learning plan started as um, an opportunity to cover some days for snow days. We have quickly uh, evolved into a two-week plan, and now are looking at a much longer, longer plan. So what we had um, originally uh, sketched out as our distant learning plan, we are changing rapidly. We recognize that there is um, a need for um, to personalize the connection a little bit more. So, and I, I can make a, a comment regarding, um, uh, Lisa, I believe you asked about the special education notice. Yes. And uh, essentially what they're saying is um, we don't need to hold all PPTs to match IEPs to distant learning. We are absolutely still um, maintaining uh, you know, appropriate uh, modifications and accommodations to the best extent possible, and they are doing uh, consultations. So um, any specific questions, you can certainly uh, reach out to the case manager or also Karen Gogel, who's the director of student services. She is um, speaking to people throughout the day, all day long. Okay. Thank you very much, Missy. Thank you, Jim. Okay, Missy, this is Paul. I know that there's a program in the Atlantic Connecticut. Paul? Yeah. Okay, we're, yeah. we're following the agenda, and this is not an opportunity for public comment, okay? Well, Thank this is... Do any of the board members have any comments or questions for Jim or for Missy? There's free Chromebooks for every family being donated by the Connecticut with the lamp with this. Are we pursuing that at all? I want to say. Paul, okay. respect the meeting, please. We have a we have some order to take. Okay, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is item four, acceptance of minutes. And we had two meetings in February on the 11th to the 24th. So we'll start with the February 11th minutes. Um, did anybody have any comments about the minutes? Or a motion, I'd like to make a motion with respect to the minutes. So move to accept Dave Malley. Okay, so motion to accept the minutes of February 11th as submitted. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Did, who was that? Mark. Mark seconded. Okay, we have a motion that's been seconded to adopt the February 11th minutes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the minutes of February 11th are adopted. And then we have the minutes of February 24th, which was our special meeting where we heard from the um, auditors. Any comments with respect to those minutes? Any a motion with respect to the minutes? Move to accept the February 24th meeting minutes. Jim Franklin. Is there a second to Jim's motion? I'll second that, Lisa Andora. Second by Lee. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to accept the minutes of February 24th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions. Okay, so the minutes are adopted. All right, moving on to item five, which all these things seem very old at this point. Um, but just to let you know, I will correspond to the Board of Ed regarding the format of capital requests. And um, and I know Ray that, and they'll be forwarding something to us at some point. Uh, March 3rd, I forwarded Okay, Jim, might, we might need to mute everybody but whoever's speaking. Okay. I'm doing a lot of stuff. It hurts my earbuds. Okay. Um, March 3rd, Hey, Natalie, my apologies. I had to mute everybody, and then I muted you also. So uh, 
we're back to we, we should be back to fine. Okay. So, so anyway, I sent I did give feedback to the Board of Ed regarding um, our desire to to see the Board of Ed and the Board of and the town work together on sharing back office systems as well as potentially personnel. Um, and then I also item C under five was just acknowledging the materials that we received at the at our last uh, meeting um, from the the board of the board of ed. Um, item six unfinished business we had none, and so we'll go on to seven. And seven A, I sent a proposed revised budget schedule and meeting schedule. Um, we were tonight's meeting was was originally supposed to go forward about two weeks ago. Um, where we hear from the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed um, in response to the directives that we've issued. And um, because of the, the pandemic and the uncertainty of how meetings were going to be handled um, and the continuing issue, issuance of guidance by the governor and um, getting, getting the Zoom meeting up and running, um, we pushed that meeting back till tonight. So. Um, that that we went ahead and did, and and after that, you can see I've suggested that. Um, yeah, thank you, Jim. Jim's put it up on the screen for everybody now. That um, instead of having our regular April meeting, we would instead meet on April 21st at another special board of finance meeting, um, and at that time. Um, we would give directives to the Board of Selectmen and Board of Ed as far as the budgets to be presented at the public hearing. So um, that's actually an, an extra week. I'm suggesting more than we normally have, but I thought that made sense given the, you know, the demands on, on both the town side and the Board of Ed side right now, um, as well as, you know, perhaps we'll give them some um, it might take us a while to get our comments and thoughts to them. If you recall, normally at this meeting, we hear their presentations. Um, we have a couple of members of the Board of Finance gather questions in the upcoming week from Board of Finance members and direct them to the town and to the Board of Ed. That, and then we'll get that feedback prior to our, our meeting on the 21st. So that would be, um, the proposal would be to go to the 21st. And then following that, meeting um, at which time we would set the agendas or set the budgets that we wanted to be presented at the public hearing we would put another week in there and schedule the public hearing for May 5th okay um, and the public hearing unfortunately will have to be via zoom and it's going to be a challenge logistically but but we'll do the best we can um, and the governor's guidance has suspended all in-person meetings um, and I'll budget vote. So um, what will happen after the public hearing is the Board of Finance is going to be the, um, instead of just adopting a budget that then would go to town meeting and or referendum, we will in fact adopt the budget for the town without a vote by the townspeople um, just, just for this year. And we also would be empowered to set the mill rate. So this proposed um, calendar talks about doing that following the public hearing on May 5th. Okay. So just looking at the that oh and I would also suggest that we continue to just play it by ear. Maybe there'll be more guidance, maybe something else will happen that we're gonna to need to add more time. Um I, I I don't know where, but I figured this would be a good start and it would be good to have it out there for the, the public to know when we when we hope to be meeting. So if anybody has any comments on that or if you'd like to to make a motion um, with respect to a new calendar. Move that way. <laughs> I've unmuted everyone. Did you uh, make a motion, Mark? Mark, Mark, move that we adopt a calendar. As I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. I think we already did. I did. Right. Mike, 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 Mike Malloy did. 
Oh, Mike did. Okay, I can't see Mike. Probably should say our names when we talk. <laughs> yeah, that, would, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Mark, so Mark. Marcus, yeah, Marcus moved and Mike has seconded the adoption of the proposed um, revised budget schedule as uh, set forth in that in this memo. And Kelly, you got a copy of that, right? Or you can see it. Um, yes, I did. So you can set out the dates if, if that's appropriate in a minute. Um, any any further discussion? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. So that that's done. Um, and we can go on to oh, 7B, which is consideration and act on retention of auditor for FY1920. Um, so we are in the, the last year of the um, engagement with the auditing firm. And um, it is, yeah, year four out of a possible five years. Um, there's a slight increase. I believe it's at a thousand dollars in the total um, proposal by the auditing firm, and I think I think everybody's. You know, I don't know if, if we want to get any feedback from the town or the board of ed, or if everybody's comfortable. Um, I can give you a sample motion, which I think is Mr. McNally's bailiwick. Yes, um, I yeah move to move to continue with them. Move to appoint Mahoney Sable CPAs and advisors as auditors for the town and board of education for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2020. Is so moved. Second, seconded, Jim Franklin. And Jim seconded. All those in favor? Well, can we have a discussion? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> discussion with respect uh, to the Yeah, is that. Is that um, thousand dollars each year progressing, or is it just a thousand dollars for the three years or the two years? The increase. The, the um, I don't have the full RFP <laughs> response to the RFP, but what I have is the the schedule at the back and year three. Um, had a total fee of thirty four thousand five hundred and year four had a thirty five thousand five hundred so I believe it's a one hundred dollar increase it looks to be it split five hundred on the town side and five hundred on the board of that side I don't know if that answers question Lee or not yeah that, yeah I can figure it out from there yeah it goes back to what they originally proposed several years ago okay. when they responded to our case not um, anything new yeah, I just want to make note of it. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, uh, in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. So far, we're we're batting a hundred tonight. Um, okay. So the next. Item then is review operating budget proposals from the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education. And Jim has jumped to put his hand out on the screen, so I guess we'll start on the town side. Okay, thank you. I'll refer to the, uh, the document that's on the screen, but you, all of you have a copy of it. I wasn't going to scroll down, but I was going to talk about some specific items. If on uh, page one of the presentation, the general government budget is 1.86% ahead of the current year, slightly lower than the Board of Finance direction, we anticipate that the Board of Finance is going to modify the direction due to the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, governor, uh, the Governor Executive Order number 7I extends the budget deadlines and suspends the person budget adoption, as Natalie mentioned. The Board of Finance will set the budget and the no rate. 
the Board of uh, Selectmen passed a declaration of emergency, which makes the town eligible to apply to FEMA to cover extra costs at a 75% reimbursement rate. Uh, the Board of Selectmen also passed a uh, motion authorizing the alteration of the FY21 budget deadline, which you have modified already tonight. Moving into the budget, 48% of all town departments are at 0% or less when compared to last year. We continue to share services with the Farmington Valley Health District, Tobacco Valley Health District, Youth Services and Fire Dispatch with Granby, Animal Control with Subfield, and Ambulance Services from the Granby Ambulance Association. We have also expanded our shared services that we provide to the school district and to the library. And the pie chart uh, uh, indicates where uh, the budget is spent. By the way, I would mention for the viewing public that we posted uh, all of this information on the town website uh, and it's under news under FY21 on uh, Board of Finance budget. Uh, if the members go to page two, um, it's a spreadsheet that lists the proposed spend by department. If you move to page three, I will speak briefly to the townwide concerns, budget saving areas, area of risk and major budget drivers or significant areas of reduction. Uh, wages have increased 2%. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, we are not discussing or bringing forward any recommendations, but that were not funded as we have in previous years. We also will only put forth critical capital items this year and next year until things stabilize. The fire marshal and emergency management departments are being merged together to help us be more responsive in times of crisis and develop a bench strength. Uh, the budget increases our investment in economic development by $19,000 or 63%. Uh, regarding town-wide concerns, the current bond anticipation notes, uh, otherwise known as bands, uh, we budgeted 3% in the current year and it actually netted 1.4%. Um, the bond market is extremely volatile. I've been uh, on phone to our consultant several times in the last couple of days. And uh, we are three months away from getting a, uh, a new note. And uh, I still would recommend that you use the number, uh, the 3% number that's in your budget uh, for the band. Although it may be, uh, may be less, but uh, uh, at this point, I think that's a prudent thing to do. Uh, the tax collection rate may be impacted by mortgage issues and escrow issues uh, due to COVID-19. I thought that was worthy of bringing forth and just reminding the, the uh, board on that. State aid, we haven't heard anything uh, about any reductions and the legislature's not in sessions, but uh, session rather, but they could always come back. Uh, some significant thing, uh, 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 significant comments about the fire department um, our fire department uh, is no longer a rural flavored bedroom community fire department, but we're a busy community with 30,000 cars coming through uh, town daily. Uh, there were 297 calls for service in the past year, and most of those calls lasted one to three hours. Our volunteer firefighters and officers, they do a great job, uh, and they provide a significant weekly time commitment to the town as they go on calls. They receive extensive training and attend meetings every week. Uh, we're fortunate in the last uh, uh, year, we've actually grown uh, in our volunteer force, unlike many of the other places uh, uh, surrounding towns that have lost members. Uh, we actually have 10 new recruits at various stages of training. Um, and, uh, but there are not a large number of volunteers available during the day. The Board of Selection has met with the fire department leadership to start to flesh out what the future force may need to look like and to be ahead of the curve. Uh, it's been determined by the Board of Selectmen that we should commission a study to evaluate the volunteer fire department of the future. And um, you know that model could recommend staying the way we are or it could include paid staff during the day to cover administrative duties or equipment cleaning after an event or answering a call. Uh, model also could include a shared services and resources with a neighboring fire department. Uh, we, won't, we won't know that until we have a study. The goal would be to have the study and subsequent analysis completed in 2020. 
and then to have a conversation with the Board of Finance, uh, well, obviously the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the town regarding the implementation of the study recommendations. We would want to start that discussion um, early next year. Um, the reality is uh, that you know, this could result in increased operating costs, so we'll have to look at it really carefully, but it may be something that we're going to need to evolve to. Uh, in the past two years, we've made significant progress uh, in funding the capital plan uh, over the next five years that will replace 30 and 40 year old equipment with the next generation of equipment uh, that will keep our volunteers and our community safe. Uh, now is the time to evaluate the operating side and develop with the fire department, the boards of selectmen, finance, and the community a plan to meet those needs as we continue to deliver the current high level of fire service to the community. If you go to page four, budget savings, uh, we've provided in the past year $313,000 worth of uh, service uh, to shared services to the schools, $10,000 to the library. Uh, that includes custodial health small repairs and property insurance. Uh, and uh, um, the Shared Service Committee will research uh, uh, accounting and payroll software for the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen to share. Uh, unified management uh, is, uh, is working. Uh, the, uh, that's the building supervisor tool belt model uh, where uh, we also have uh, the, uh, it's directed by the DPWs, uh, uh, director, uh, and we're working more with the schools uh, and doing more things in the town. I just gave you some examples. Uh, it's a partial list of savings. It came to $66,000. Um, just to hit a couple of them, uh, the public safety building and the police interior, uh, we re-leveled the concrete floor, painted the interior, exterior doors, carpentry work, spent $1,600 in, in, uh, in materials and uh, we end up saving $7,800 if we had gone elsewhere for that. So if you, either we don't do it, we prefer it, or we used to call a vendor. Now we're trying to do most of this uh, ourselves, and as you can tell, we're pretty versatile when uh, you look at the second entry on public safety, where the police double entry doors were rotted, the bottom 15 inches were rotted, uh, new doors would have cost $8,000, uh, we spent $1,600 worth of materials, uh, I'm sorry, $400 worth of materials, I looked at the wrong line, $400 worth of materials. Uh, so uh, what happened is uh, DPW cut the doors down on the bottom and re-welded uh, steel plates on the bottom. So for $400 in materials, uh, we were able to save $7,600. And there's numerous examples that I use about that. The fire department ceiling and the walls of the Bay Area were painted for the first time in 30 years. Um, $1,600 worth of materials. Uh, a contractor would have cost about $8,000. Savings was about $6,400. Uh, library, just to let you know, we uh, went inside the library and uh, helped them out in the bathrooms uh, and uh, did uh, redid the stall doors and things like that. Uh, and replaced the water fountain and that saved $1,300 there. Uh, we took over the duties, as I mentioned, of the custodial uh, staff in November, and that previously was a vendor for the library, and that saved $5,000 of, of the library budget. The schools, I've talked about things we've done before on top of the roofs and things like that, but also the, the security gate that was installed um, in the high school hallway, it would have cost $1,000 if somebody else did it. Uh, we did it uh, uh, just for, for, for cost. Uh, we fixed tra tra uh, tripping hazards on new pavers near the gym for $300. Fixed leaks on um, the roof, as I mentioned in previous meetings. Town Hall, we've done some significant work in the last two years in painting, DPW facilities, same thing. So when you look at these projects, uh, it's a savings of $66,000. So the unified uh, approach is working, and I think we're able to provide better service exterior to, for the schools and better support inside the schools for the schools as they direct what happens inside. Um, the uh, general uh, government areas of concern, uh, accounting software, resident trooper program costs. Uh, at this point, we're still paying 85% of the, of the total. Uh, if the state decided to change, that would be a potential risk. Um, snow removal labor costs are very tight right now in the upcoming year. 
uh, we had a pleasant surprise with health insurance where it only increased 1%, but we're still going to have to wait until June for long-term care. I'm sorry, long-term disability workers' comp property and casualty. So, so um, at this point, that's, uh, you know, it, it could be volatile, could be a concern. Uh, the cost for the uh, transfer station and the utilities, especially water and electric, are very volatile. And then uh, just moving on to uh, the, the, the last page, uh, which is, well, I'm sorry, page six. Um, 20 of our 42 departments are flat increase or lower. This narrative uh, will identify significant plus or minus departments when compared to FY20. Uh, I'm just going to hit the highlights. Uh, the uh, town council uh, is a decrease of two thousand dollars but we we're concerned that there may be some risk there because we have two contracts uh, uh, but uh, that we're going to start to negotiate in june uh, in january of 2021 uh, but we're confident enough to go with the number uh buildings uh just bring that up because it actually shows a decrease on the building line and last year we had a seven thousand dollar of expenditure that was added uh, it was uh, it was a one-time event, so we did not spend that money. We we uh, added that back uh, into the line so that we could show actually a decrease in that line this year. Engineering, we have an increase of two thousand dollars or fourteen percent uh, due to uh, uh, more activity. This was prior to coronavirus, and, but more activity in the building department and the need for engineering services. Uh, fire department, uh, regardless of uh, where we go uh, in the future, this uh, budget offers a $9,000 increase of 5.6%. $4,500 of that is for training uh, for seven of the 10 new members and for officer training, and an office $1,000 increase in fuel as we're going out more, and $3,500 uh, increase for gas, for gas reimbursement for the membership. So when they get a call, they get reimbursed for the gas. Um, the emergency management and fire marshal, uh, those lines uh, are being combined. Uh, in, uh, it's a net increase of $5,162 to $8,000. That all comes out of the fire marshal uh, line. Uh, we would increase the deputy fire marshal from four hours weekly to eight hours weekly. We have another deputy that is at eight hours that would stay the same. And the fire marshal hours would be increased from 14 to 15 hours. The merge departments uh, will allow us to develop a bench strength for emergency management, which is critical during the crisis. Uh, the public works is an increase of $15,000 and 2.1%, primarily driven by labor. Health district is an increase of 7% or $2,200, uh, and that's an increase of per capita of 50 cents per person based on a population project of 5,147. Uh, it's part of the Farmington Valley's health district five-year plan to, uh, to uh, address service opportunities that they, they see or they need to do to come into compliance. The library is an increase of, uh, the recommendation is an increase of $4,800. Um, which is to help the uh, library association with rising utility costs and salary increases. Um, the minimum wage is going to affect the library significantly. Uh, the minimum wage increase is going to, over the next three to four years, is going to be added to their operating costs. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, the you know, town provides custodial support, property insurance. Uh, the uh, town provides 73% of the library's operating budget. Uh, the, um, the only reason I'm talking about uh, recreation field maintenance, uh, it's a decrease of $2,900 or 10% is because there was another one-time item in last year's budget for extra fertilization. So we did not keep that in the budget. We took that money out. Uh, the cemeteries, uh, which I never talk about, is I'm going to talk about today because it's a decrease of $1,300. Or, and that is what the, we give to the, uh, the Center uh, Cemetery Association. Uh, they unfortunately have um, run out of members uh, that want to continue to do this. So the cemetery association is disbanding and DPW will maintain the cemetery. The economic development line uh, is an increase of, uh, of $19,000 or 63%. Uh, we're looking at two consultants uh, that we've brought on board already in the current fiscal year. Uh, 
uh, and one will be marketing commercial in uh, marketing and commercial real estate. The other will be business development. Uh, it would be uh, we'd be increasing from seven hours weekly to 14 hours weekly. And uh, the current programs worked well. We filled. Uh, we had a three-month gap where uh, CERC had decided not to continue with the service, and we're back on track. The first thing that they're doing right now is they're uh, picking up the phone and calling their businesses, see how the businesses are doing. Uh, Social Security is an increase of almost $9,100 or 5.8%. Uh, it's a formula thing on underestimating the cost in the current year. Street lighting is a decrease of $3,000. We're seeing savings from the LED lights that uh, Eversource owns the fixtures and the lights. They replaced uh, the street lights with uh, many of the street lights, not all of them, about 170 of them with LED lights. And uh, they uh, uh, are showing some savings in there from previous years. Uh, the RCC, uh, no surprise there. It's an increase of $10,000 or almost 5%. Uh, because of increased tipping fees by uh, Mira, with the Materials Innovation Resource Authority. Uh, they charge the net cost of operation and their costs have increased significantly as their antiquated plant becomes increasingly unreliable as we've talked about in the past. Membership went up about $1,000 uh, and uh, uh, the G uh, GCTV contribution increases from $8,000 to $9,000. Uh, we uh, did not fund the Visitor Bureau in the current budget. Utilities, an increase of 2.6% uh, driven, uh, or $4,300, driven by you know, uh, water and electricity rates. Uh, MDC went up 13%. And um, just future areas of concern, technology, government, uh, general government needs to develop a comprehensive, uh, actionable five to 10 year strategy on upgrading our IT infrastructure. The Greenway, uh, it gets used an awful lot, uh, and uh, we've started to, uh, we previously have done some paving, uh, and we've started to address the long-term Greenway maintenance in the five-year plan. Stability of state aid and shifting of expenses to the town is a continuing uh, concern. And capital, as I mentioned last year, as the Board of E and the Board of uh, Selectmen do more shared services, we may want a third category of capital for uh, projects on school uh, property and buildings, but we can deal with that later. Uh, just to go back to the fact that you know the, this uh, uh, budget was uh, was reviewed and approved by the Board of Selectmen. Prime, most of it was done prior to the coronavirus uh, significant outbreak. We certainly realized that the, uh, the Board of Finance will probably give us different direction than what we've got now. We also, uh, I just want to mention, even though I've talked a lot about a lot of things and some future things we do recognize that capital dollars uh, need to go to just strictly uh, emergency items for the near future. With that said, I'm done. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'll open it up to questions from the, the members of the Board of Finance. And I also will ask um, one of the members of the Board of Finance maybe to um, to be the repository for after the meeting if board members have any additional questions for the Board of Selectmen with respect to the budget um, to get them to this designated board member who in the past has been Jim Franklin. Is Jim volunteering to do it again this year? I don't know. Is Jim there? Is he? Natalie, I'd uh... I'll agree, I'll agree to collect the comments for the Board of Ed. Okay, that sounds good. So we have another member um, willing to collect the comments for the town side? Hey, Natalie, this is Oliver. I can, I can handle that. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you, Oliver. All right, so with that, does anybody have any questions for um, Jim at this point? Members right, of the Board of Ed. Jim Franklin here. I have a few questions, uh, uh, comments for, for Jim. Uh, first of all, Jim, thanks for your savings for the shared services. Uh, I think the kind of approach is working, and I think it's really uh, you're making it work, and um, much your efforts are much appreciated. Uh, and secondly, for helping out the library uh, with their with with their, with their finances. Uh, my one last question to you is: uh, What can you? Uh, 
what can you do to manage uh, to reduce your budget to uh, in the one percent range? Well, I mean, certainly that would be something that the board of selectmen would would have a discussion on. Uh, we purposely came in uh, slightly under your 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 ask, your original ask, uh, and we think we'd have to take a look at it. Uh, there, uh, it's a relatively tight budget, but there are some items that, that we could look at. I keep, uh, you know, I can get, uh, you know, a third of a percentage point by keeping economic development at the current level, uh, but I would look for other options uh, to, than that. Uh, and certainly, the board of selectmen will look at whatever it is that 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 we think we can do to get it down lower. But that, that would, that you, you, in some years, insurance. Uh, there might be some money in insurance. Uh, depends on how the you know there might be ten thousand dollars out there if the rates come in at four percent instead of eight percent for uh, you know disability and life insurance and property and casualty and, and workman's comp. So uh, it, it's it's a non-answer answer, uh, but certainly something the board of selectmen would work with. Anyone else have any questions for Jim at this point? Jim, I, I have a question. It's Lee. Um, very thorough. Um, it's a, a really good document that you gave us, and uh, I appreciate all the work that you put behind it. Um, concerning the fire department, um, I'm glad you're moving forward to take a look at, you know, maybe shared services on that part. But what would be, I mean, is it too soon to say what kind of town, you know, whether it's Granby or Suffield or Windsor Locks or Simsbury that you would be looking to join with, or that would come out in the report? It's too soon to speak about it. It certainly would come out to the report, and that's why we wanted to look at that. And that's why, that's why the, the report's going to be really important. It's going to help us with a map of where we need to go. Yeah, because I've seen some of the projections out for the fire department and they seem, you know, uh, if it's, if those are true, it's going to cost the town quite a bit of money in the next few years. So I was just a little concerned about that. But overall, I think you're, you know, it's good. And I, I agree with Jim, if there's anything that you could, uh, you know, work it around the 1% range, that would be wonderful to help us out. Thank you. And, and Natalie, with a follow-up question for, for Jim on that, the, the study of the fire department, who does that involve a cost, an outside consultant? The uh, study would be a capital item that we would we would bring forth. And it would be a okay. it would be an outside consultant, correct. So you envision that as being a capital item? We envisioned it as a capital item. Correct. Okay. Anyone else have questions for Jim with respect to his proposal tonight? Hey, Jim, Jeff Clark. Um, I also thank you for the thorough uh, report. Um, in terms of the, has, has the Board of Selectmen looked at um, what they might consider critical capital items versus non-critical capital items? No, we're going to be looking at that at our next meeting. And um, is there, I guess it's a little off this paper, but is there anything happening with the number of changes and closures this year and this fiscal year that suggests um, the Board of Selectmen may have uh, additional funds to return or additional expenses? I don't see expenses going past what our budget is. Uh, we do, uh, if it's anything that we're spending for FEMA, I mean, for the coronavirus, we are keeping track of that and we'll be able to get reimbursement by FEMA. Um, I don't, uh, so at this point, I don't see a large expense that would be, would exceed our budget. And there are not, and there are not significant savings either with respect to at this point, uh, yeah, we're, we're, I'm still working through that. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, just again then, with the fire department study, the likely 
to be a critical capital item then? Well, we, as a board of selectmen, we'd, we'd have to um, we'd have to discuss that. My, my viewpoint is that it is. Okay, but you haven't had that discussion yet. Okay. We have not had that discussion. Okay, thank you. And on the um, tipping fees, is that are you pretty comfortable with the amount you've got in there for? Yes, I, I think we've got the appropriate amount in there uh, based on an average year of trash disposal. If there's a heavy year of trash disposal, then no, I'm not. But at this point, based on uh, based on the last two years average, I'm comfortable with the number. Any other questions or comments at this point? And if not, if um, you do have any subsequent thoughts, if you could direct your questions to Oliver by, I think, say five days, um, that would be great. And then Oliver, if you can just collect them and, and get them on their way to Jim so he has time to fit the fit the responses into his busy schedule, that would be great. All right. Yeah, if everyone can get them to me by end of day Sunday, I can turn that around and, and get it to Jim within the following day or so. That sounds great. And then the expectation, Jim, would be if you could turn the, turn it around um, in advance of our meeting on the uh, 17th? Absolutely, sure. I'm, guess, I'm guessing that might not be the right date. The 21st? That sounds better. Yeah, so if you could get your responses to us, um, you know, five days before, if possible. If absolutely. not, yeah, absolutely. whatever you can do, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. All right, and then on the Board of Ed side, um, Jim can put up your documents, and Jeffrey's going to walk us through that. Hi, good evening, Natalie. Will Jim be able to put up our PowerPoint slides? I think so. Do you have it now? No. Do you have it, Jim? If not, I could get Ray to try to do it. No, I, yeah, I, uh, let me just try one more. Okay. Is it on now? No. It doesn't appear to be now. These things always work when, work when you uh, test them. Yeah. All board of finance members have a copy of it, don't they? Yes. You do. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it works, but I, and it's, it's also available for the for the public on the on the website. So if if Jim's not able to get it up, um, members of the public. And check the East Granby website um, and find the Board of Ed 2021 recommended. Looks like correct, Natalie. That's correct. Yeah. If everyone else can go on mute, that'd be helpful with the potato chip bags and etc. <laughs> okay, we're all ready. I'll start going through it. Despite the challenges, this budget reflects a spending plan that continues to support district initiatives, as well as maintaining the excellent programs that our students deserve and the community has come to expect. And as we go through this again, the Board of Ed did uh, approve this. We approved a 2.33 budget several weeks ago before the COVID-19 virus. And we are presenting the Board of Finance tonight, our 2.33 and the two. Point zero, as requested by the Board of Finance. On the first screen, you see the budget projection for the next 10 years put out by the New England School Development Council, uh, which is interesting. Uh, many districts in the country expect that data will show that their enrollment will go down 
and you can see East Granby Iron enrollment is staying fairly stable for the next 10 years. If you look at back 10 years ago when the New England School Development Council projected, you'd see they did a pretty good projection of where we are today. So we don't see a big decline in our local enrollment in our schools. Okay, next slide. Okay, here again, we've presented these budget drivers uh, previously to the Board of Finance. Uh, the first one, again, special education programming costs, significant rise. You'll see this in all districts throughout the state of Connecticut, probably throughout the whole country. And unfortunately, the district, we have no control over these expenses. Uh, we get them to fit in, and we work the best around them. But that's $96,000, and it is significant. And again, it's if you look at what's happening in every town, you'd see similar things. Uh, estimated increase for teachers of 2.74 for their new contract. Uh, shows that number. We have settled with the teachers in their contract. Our non-certified salaries, uh, we just have an estimated estimated pending number. Uh, we are in mediation with that contract, so that hasn't been settled. And actually the teacher's contract went into a, you know, it went into an arbitration. Uh, we settled between the, with the teachers between before an arbiter made the final uh, decision. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, looking at electricity projections, next year will be a budget driver. Uh, if the air conditioning goes in all gross school, we'll see an increase in our electrical costs. You see there, approximately $66,000. And it just jumped in it. But before we jump to the next screen, before someone asks, you notice we have an increase in fuel oil. And I guess my question initially this year was why an increase when fuel oil is dropping? But of course, uh, looking back at it, that was a line item that's been underestimated for several years. Uh, we weren't putting enough money into that account for fuel oil. And to bring it back up to where we think it needs to be at $17,650. Uh, that's quoted at $2.09 a gallon for oil. Uh, there has been a collapse in the oil industry, and we're hoping to maybe go back and renegotiate that again. It was rene renegotiated previously, uh, but 209 any of us can go out on the street and get it lower than that today. So hopefully uh, Ray's got a real good ability to go out and renegotiate things. Uh, we'll take a look at that number. But that is an increase, again, because of uh, past uh, not putting enough money into that account. So when you look at the total budget drivers, you see they come out to about 2.57%. Okay, thank you, Jim. Next slide. Okay, here again, when we originally started meeting December 18th with administrators, a board member and board of finance uh, were invited to participate. Originally, when you asked for a wish list and what, what the needs are and what the wants are, the budget was a 5.41 percent increase. When the board, of, excuse me, when the board of ed took a look at it on February 18th, they got it down to 4.45. With another budget workshop on March 2nd, they were able to get it down to 2.99. And then the superintendent, with her magic, has been able to go back and take a look at things and has a a budget proposal that the board has accepted of 2.33. Uh, that's where we're at right now. Thank you, Jim. Go to the next slide, please. Again, here, if we take a look at revenues, you can see from the state, we got 1439000 dollars uh, $1,439,285, $84 from education cost sharing. Uh, from the excess cost grant, there's another $171,000 plus. Uh, from the choice grant out of Hartford, we get $524,000. Uh, that's not counting the money we get for any special ed costs that we may incur. Uh, the Perkins, which is a federal grant, we get $7,227. And our school milk program, we get $7,916. And you see the total revenue. And then for local funding, tuition that we send for out of state, I'm sorry, this is tuition that we get from different programs we have, from kids from our choice program, uh, from other areas that we get back $375,000. And we also collect, uh, they call it, we, I call it pay to participate of $33,000. Uh, that's for students in athletics, uh, any type of clubs that they're gonna be paying a, a fee to participate in that club. Okay, next one. Thank you, Jim. 
Okay, we'll go by this one quickly because again, this is what we're approving, but I know the Board of Finance wants to see it too. So 2.33 with the adjustment to show the dollar increase, it shows the total. And we also show the total at the bottom of 2%, which is a $339,000 increase. And that total. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, again, this is at, if you look at this at 2.33, when we go to the next slide, you'll see everything's gonna change except when we look at salaries. So if we go to the next slide, please, Jim, at 2.00, we've cut down contracted salaries because in order to get down to the 2%, we're going to cut some staffing. We're not sure where that staffing is gonna be, it's approximately, I'm looking at my numbers here, notes, uh, $50,000 plus or minus a few. I think I'll find it here somewhere, exactly where it is. Uh, but we're looking at some, some money we may get back from dental benefits, but it won't be much, it could only be a few thousand dollars. So we figure to get down to the 2.0, we're going to cut some staffing position. And again, uh, that could be staffing anywhere in the district, uh, not necessarily teaching, not necessarily paras. Uh, we just don't know at this time where that's going to be, especially with all the changes going on. And it's just at $50,000, it's pretty close. And we'd hate to tell somebody now we're going to be cutting their position uh, in this when things are so tough. So right now, it's about $50,000 plus, plus a few is the difference between the 2.33 and the 2.0. So if you go to the next slide. Here again, by keeping a 2.33 budget, a continue, continuation of programming at all our schools, it maintains our class size guidelines. Uh, we're going to have some business office operation enhancements. Uh, we all know that uh, it was a difficult year and the superintendent putting together a team of people coming in and putting the accounting together and having Ray come on finally full-time in November uh, we we're able to put this together and we're looking at in the coming year of having having some exciting enhancements that'll come on to make our operations more efficient. Uh, we had two union contract negotiations. Uh, one is completed and like I said, we're in mediation with our non-certified people. And here you can see compliance with contractual obligations. You can see decrease in our group health and dental insurance. We're figuring about an increase of 4% for workman's comp. We made adjustments for utilities and 3.7% of the staff. And this is interesting, is being charged to the choice grant and idea grant. So when we look at staffing of our school, not all of it is coming out of our operating budget. Uh, over the years, it's been taken and put into the choice grants. Uh, we would like to see it in our operating budget and be able to have those two things separate because if anything ever happened and we lost that choice grant, uh, we'd end up losing about 4% of our staffing and that would be uh, detrimental to our, to our programs. So that's something that uh, we sort of have to keep an eye on. Okay, next slide please, thank you. Potential risks, again, number one, special ed. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, we, we've never come back and asked for more money at the end of the year, in the past few years that I've been on the board anyway, uh, for any of our expenses or special education. Uh, last year, Grandy in May came back and had to ask for $385,000 because of special ed from their board of finance and it was passed unanimously to do that. Uh, special ed is a tough one. We work very hard on it. We've made some savings. We brought kids home the past few years to try to, every time we save a dollar, it costs us $5 to do something else. Uh, we're looking in the future to even see if we can offer some programs in our own district and maybe having some people paying tuition to sending them here if we can find some space. So, so that's, uh, that's a tough one, and it, it's one that we're always looking at it throughout the year. Next one, if you go with special ed, you have transportation, especially when you're busing kids around to meet the programs that meet their needs. That's an expense uh, that can change in the middle, middle of the year on us. Uh, it can change on September 5th when someone moves into town. Instructional supplies, 
Uh, we try to keep a pretty good handle on that from year to year. Uh, but again, those things, those things certainly go up and they're needed, especially now when we look at distant learning. We may not need an, as many pencils, but we need more things in technology. Uh, under budgeted line items, uh, I mentioned the fuel oil. I mean, that was a big one. There are always places where things, it looks easy to under budget. Uh, we look at our cost for our attorney fees. We've been spending a lot of money with attorney fees with contracts, and, and now with the virus and contracts with all kinds of people that work for us, uh, we have to look at all the legalities of everything involved. We also consider the mid-year health benefit changes that can happen uh, due to major life events. And certainly, uh, I think with Jim's help, our building maintenance and repairs have been monitored. Uh, we, we certainly can't stop them from happening, but I think we have a much better eye on what's going on. We know our buildings aren't getting younger. Uh, we know they need to be repaired, but I think uh, the basic maintenance with uh, people from gym staff, uh, people that work for the town, some of them live in the town, I think they take some pride in the work they do, and we've seen some real uh, benefits with uh, any of the programs that the people from the town have been helping with us with maintenance and repairs. Okay, next slide, please. And this gives a pie chart again of contractual items that we have and everything in our budget. Uh, we look at contractual salaries of 58% eats up most of the pie. That is not an unusual number. You can see that number well up in the 60s in districts. Uh, that's, that's what it costs to do business. And then certainly benefits uh, take up a good portion of our budget summary, uh, just like any other school district and like most businesses would be. And then you look at the different pie pieces of it, and you can see uh, where they go. Transportation, 6% special education, public, private, business insurance, and this is pretty much where it goes. And again, most of it goes towards salaries and benefits, and that's not unusual, and there's nothing unique about those numbers and here in East Granby. Okay, next slide, please. And then again, coming down, I said earlier, coming down to a 2% budget increase, uh, we would do an additional modification, I said plus 50,000, Here's the number, $56,000. Uh, we're waiting on dental and vision insurance quotes. Uh, that can only save us a couple thousand dollars. That wouldn't be much. Uh, but staffing consolidation or reduction is where we're going to take the rest of it from uh, to get down to 2%. And that's pretty much where we stand at this point. Uh, I'd like to thank the Board of Education members, the community for working with us. Uh, it's been very difficult, I know, for the Board of Ed. With uh, There's been a lot of work with closing schools, and I appreciate all the work our superintendent's been doing for us. Uh, Missy's been in there. Everything changes from morning to afternoon, and I think we're all in this together. We'll come out of it together, uh, but the, these expenses here are things we're trying to keep everything in line. You see that we're not asking for anything new next year. Yeah, we're not threatening to make any cuts that would upset people either. We're trying to hold the line and this is the proposal word be for 2%. So uh, with that said, I'll take some questions. Thank you. I want to thank you, Bob, as well as Missy and Ray and, and your entire staff, as well as I forgot to thank Jim and, and Jim's entire staff of Jim. Um, but, uh, you know, we know, we all know you were, have had your, your hands full for the last month in particular, and um, thank you for the time and uh, diligence that you and coming up with these proposals. Um, and so, um, Board of Finance members, if you can identify yourself and direct any questions to Bob. Jim Franklin here. Bob, I've got a couple questions. Uh, first question is the um, projected enrollment. Does that include choice and pre-K students? Number two, uh, that enrollment there there, Jim, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. And number two, is there any possibility of requesting renegotiations with the teachers union? And thirdly, um, what was the current spend for transportation? I know I see in, in here you have uh, 969,000. And what, what was it uh, this the current year? That's all my questions. Yeah, I'd have to ask Ray to take a look at what it was for this current year. I'm not sure what that was. Uh, Renegotiating with the teachers, we just signed that contract about two weeks, three weeks ago. I would imagine they would have little interest since we went all the way to arbitration 
Uh -huh. And uh, got a stipulated agreement settlement with them. Uh, so I wouldn't expect that, but that's certainly something that could be asked. And going back to your first question again. The enrollment, does that include pre-K and uh, trustees? That's East, East Granby residents. That's just okay. that it does not include uh, any choice numbers because those numbers can change from year to year depending upon where we have space or space for them to come in. Great. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Jen. And staying with the enrollment, um, this is Natalie. Um, I was just, I wasn't sure when it says 2019, does that mean last school year? So it's 1819 school year, or does that mean this current year, 1920, that we're in? Well, 1819 would be the 1819 school year. I can't, I can't see it on my printed copy here. But... Yeah, the first column is labeled 2019. So that was what I was curious. Is that historical, or is that our current year? You know, Natalie, I don't know if that was your projection for this current year or the actual number for this current year. I would assume that must be the actual number for this current year. I don't know if Ray or Missy can help me with that. Uh, Ray, Ray looks like he's muted. Yeah. Bob, I would need to go back and look at the document language before I give an answer. Okay. Yeah, now I can't answer that in a copy I have because I can't even read it. So your expectation, though, is, is that from this year to the, fall, the year beginning in the fall, you'd be approximately flat, maybe down a couple of, of students? Yes, yes. We don't see great change at all. Okay. And again, that's been pretty consistent, our enrollment. It really hasn't gone down gone down a bit over the years, but now it seems to be settling in and actually we've had some new ones moving in. And at this point, does it look as though it's all, that the students are in, in good places as opposed to, I know some years we end up with, you know, an extra 20 kindergarten years or something like that, but you're not seeing that kind of thing happen at this point. Well, that certainly could happen come August. You're correct, Natalie. Things happen. People buy houses. They decide which town they move into. And then they come in a day before school starts and register their kids or the week before. And that's usually uh, many times when we're looking whether we're going to have to hire another teacher or not. We really wait until then to see what the actual enrollment is going to be, especially in the elementary schools, especially kindergarten type setups. Okay. I have some more questions, but I want to let, yeah, Lee, go ahead. Yeah, um, on the same uh, enrollment question, uh, you said it's no choice, but that does include pre-K though, right? I, I don't know the answer to that question, Lee. I'd have to check in with Missy if she knows whether it includes pre-K or not. I, I, would, I would tend to think not, but I don't know. Okay, because they would be. I think we're K through twelve district. Uh, we're talking about K through twelve that it wouldn't include, but it, but it might. I don't know if Missy knows that answer. It's it's labeled as K through twelve. Yeah. And it's labeled K yeah. through twelve. Okay, because in past years they put pre K in too. Um, and a, a second question um, looks like a, a couple of my questions were already answered on the transportation okay. contract. Is that um, something that's hardened? I mean, obviously the buses aren't running now. That's something that we're discussing with our attorney to looking at those contracts at the present time, Lee. Okay. Yeah, good point. And every district is looking at their contracts. All right. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other Board of Finance members with questions at this point? Hey, this is Jeff Clark. I have a couple of questions. Um, Bob, thanks for the presentation and, and thanks to all who put it together. Um, uh, and the special ed, 96,000 in special ed, is that driven by, uh, you know, a, one or two situations or is it a, is it a general increase uh, among something? 
I have to be careful not to get specific yep. with numbers. Yeah. Uh, it's it's certainly an can't. increase. We have an yeah, increase in special ed. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, we legally can't get sp yeah. too specific on uh, special okay. numbers. There's too many HIPAA violations that we could run into. Um, overall, it's based upon students that have been brought in, that have come into the district that require services that look like they will be here next year. We've seen a huge increase in, in services required this year. Okay, thank you. And um, same question I think I had for the, the Board of Selectmen. Is there anything um, that you're looking at that's turning out to cost less this year that might provide a return that you hadn't expected? And anything related to coronavirus and anything related to coronavirus that is a risk or a, or, or a unknown for next year? Well, we're looking at any contracts we have and see what impacts we have on our spring semester. You know, whether they're special ed contracts or transportation, which you mentioned, uh, any, any other kind of service contracts, just looking at seeing if there's any savings. Uh, from talking with the state, it doesn't seem to be there are going to be a lot of savings going on. Uh, we don't just, pro we don't project that. Uh, not if we want to have bus company running buses, you know, the next time we want to have schools open and things like that. We have to be careful that we honor the contracts for the legalities. Uh, but we are right. looking at it. To be honest with you, you know, since we've looked at this, everything's imploded. We've been closing school. We've been going to dis uh, distance learning. So this kind of uh, for the last couple of weeks. So we've been trying to, you know, keep ourselves moving forward. We're all learning. The students. The staff, the parents, the administration, the board, we're learning as we move forward. Uh, we believe moving forward is the best route to go instead of sticking our head in the sand and waiting for everything to pass over. Uh, we believe what we're doing is working. And with, with technology and with everyone working together, uh, we'll get through this together and hopefully uh, you know, learn a lot and be better off for it. But there's a lot of, lot of questions. We, we've got to get those answered in the next few months, but again, we have our attorneys looking at any contracts we have and looking, seeing, uh, you know, if there's any savings or are there going to be added costs? I mean, things uh, involved with the schools and maintaining the cleanliness of the schools. When we do go back, certainly could have added expenses. So a lot of unknowns right now. I wish it could be more specific. All right. Thank you. Okay, no other Board of Finance members have questions. I have just a couple, Bob. Um, the first is we, we heard from uh, the first selectman about the impact of the state mandate increase in the minimum wage, specifically on the library budget, and I'm wondering if the minimum wage increase impacts um, your budget at all. Uh, not for next year. Uh, it, it's going to. Uh, it is one of the things we're looking at in our negotiations. I can't get specific because, again, we are in mediation with our non-certs. Uh, but that is a topic of discussion. And we, okay. have, we have to work with it. But again, okay. because it's still negotiations, I can't be very specific about it. Sure. Um, and my other question has to do with the business office enhancements. And that's, um, it sounds like it's very close to an item near and dear to the Board of Finance heart. I hope I speak for the rest of the board. Um, you know, the, the efficiencies and uh, uh, coordination with the town. So I'm just wondering whether, you know, what your, what your plans are with respect to that, as opposed to, I, I think um, we've applied for a grant and maybe doing a, a study. And so I just want to make sure we're not putting the cart before the horse in terms of spending money when we when we're maybe engaged in a bigger bigger review. Well, you're right. And right now we're certainly taking a look at that. Uh, again, it's an item that is probably a necessity down the road. Uh, we've been able to finally put the accounting nightmare behind us that we've had, and that's been resolved. Uh, Ray, I know now is going to be doing reconciliation on a monthly basis, and I know discussions uh, Jim and I have talked, and I know he's looking at a grant to seeing what we can do in the future to improve the back office operations. 
I know whether it's with software people or whatever, but those conversations will be, will be going on. So are these enhancements that are in the budget just an amount, a holding amount until a plan is in place across the town, or is this something that the Board of Ed's already? There, there are a few things the Board of Ed's looking for that we, we would do for next year involving trying to be more efficient with our payroll initially. But we are looking long term to see if there's any kind of software that we can work together with the town, any kind of sharing we can do with the town, because I think both of us would benefit from it. But we haven't had those we haven't had those meetings certainly the last couple months. Okay, and any other Board of Finance questions or comments at this time? I just had a quick one related to the uh, the designation. Well, when you when you highlighted the uh, three point seven percent charge to choice for uh, staffing, did that and that in addition to the normal amount that they pay, the five hundred and twenty? I'm, I'm I don't have the figure right in front of me. But it was a five. This is or is this directly billed to the choice program, or is this something that is you know encumbered within the budget? Paid for by choice. So in reality, we get the, the tuition, and in addition, we get this uh, reimbursement also? They're actually paying for those salaries right now. And the, and the, the other question that's related to that, is that in addition, is there the additional uh, special ed billing that goes on top of that, or is this this included? That, that, that's inclusive of it. That that's all. We're charging off $500,000 to the... Uh, to the to the choice grant you're not seeing that in your payroll you're seeing that coming out of the choice grant that's the first time i think think we've seen it broke out that way i appreciate it thank you well well you know mike it's a good point there there are things we want to see spelled out a little better so we all understand it a little clearer and i think ray's doing a good job of that for us It's a great presentation by everybody. It's very simple and you to understand it. I'd like to say thanks also. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I think we have Jim Francoline as our Board of Finance volunteer. To um, So Board of Finance members, if you have any questions for the Board of Ed, um, after you kind of mull over this presentation the next couple of days, please send them to Jim Francoline. We'll get them to... The Board of Ed, um, early next week. Jim, does that work for you? That works for me, Natalie. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do that same. If we get our comments to Jim by Sunday night, he'll get them to the Board of Ed within a day or so. Um, and we'll be, should be in good shape. Thank you to everyone for your efforts. Um, <laughs> So then we're down to item eight, which is our monthly reports. Um, first of all, we have anything we've talked about shared services. Has there been a meeting? I don't believe so, Jim. No, there has not been a meeting on that uh, as of yet, but uh, we do recognize we need to get that going. Okay. Anything on the building committee? Building yeah, committee is going to meet again uh, this Thursday. We're going to try a virtual meeting with the building committee. Uh, not much to update since last time when we're finishing up a little bit of the punch list on the um, a little bit of the punch list on the high school, middle school roof. Uh, all growth is complete. Uh, town roofs uh, are, are complete. Um, painting of the fascia will be complete when the weather cooperates a little bit more. I just wanted to add as the ref the, the big bugaboo right now is trying to get some information together for the air conditioning in Algrove and I think that's going to be even more difficult uh, with the current climate, but we'll see. We meet, we meet on Thursday. Okay. And then on financials, we have um, a while ago, I think we got the Board of Ed's February's and then we just got the town's February. 
um, yesterday, something like that. And I can't find them. So is there a motion with respect to for February? Yeah, they are. Or maybe you'd like to talk about this in a way for me here. <laughs> no, I, I, I've, I've got, I, I can discuss it if you want. I'm just trying to put it up on the screen. No, no, I was, I was talking to the board members. We did just, it was actually it was today, right? March 31st. Yeah. So what, what's your sense for finance members? Would you rather just wait and deal with that in, at our next meeting? I'm fine with that. I'd be okay. Uh, Jim Franklin, yes, I, I agree with that, Natalie. We just table it for um, April. Yeah, Natalie, that's that's good at Mark. Um, I'm just curious of where the reconciliation, how current the current month or current year is. So that's a question, I guess, for for Ray, maybe. Um, I know we we do, you've just completed. We've got the audit done, and that's actually another question that they. I would, Jim, like to get a hard copy of the audit. I know you sent the electronic version, but if I could get a hard copy, I'd appreciate it. Sure, I'd be um, glad to do that. And Ray, um, and as long as we're talking about documents, we did the the Board of Ed did get the um, corrective action submitted to OPM, right? Actually, we submitted it to uh, Jim and Kelly to be put on letterhead. Hopefully, it's uh, suffice to uh, Jim to, to have any questions. You give me a shout, but um, once he put it on a letterhead and signed it, it was all set. Yes, and we sent it to all the appropriate uh, folks, uh, about six or seven people, and uh, that went out uh, six hours after I got it from Ray. Great. We did, we and, did and run I through the auditor, just to let everybody know. Um, we ran it by the auditor. It was uh, it met um, all, this, all the standards that they were looking for. Um, we did not try to shortchange, but we also did not want to uh, back ourselves into a corner in, turn of, in terms of how we do our job and our processes and procedures internally. So, um, and that's what we're working on. In our that would state. be great. Could could one of you get a copy of the plan? I assume it's not too long. Um, to to me, I, I know I'd like to see it. This other board of finance members would like to see it. I'd I'd get it out to you as well. You want to send the official one, Jim, or do you want me to send the draft? I can send the official. Okay. That'd be great. But did Ray, maybe you can send me, I was also looking for a copy of the OPEB report, and I don't believe that's an attachment to the, the audit, so if I could get a copy of that. I guess you didn't hear that, Ray. Button, I'm sorry. Um, I okay, no. I over. Let me take a look, see what we've got. I thought I sent that over, the OPEB report. Well, I'll take well, a look. Okay. And okay. Could, it could be sitting in the inbox. The inbox is, I don't go in there anymore. I'm <laughs> going to be, I'll be in the office tomorrow morning, so I'll take a look. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, the status of the reconciliation? Yeah. We are, we are reconciled through February. Um, I'm working with Kelly. We've kind of been playing until a lot of this has gone down with the uh, COVID-19. But um, we're trying to get together either, well, somehow virtually in the next few days. And um, I think she left me a voicemail last week when I was on the phone. And she said there was like a $4,000 adjustment we need to make. So, but we're, we're, Theoretically reconciled through February, we just have to finalize uh, that that final number through February, and uh, we should be we should be maintaining it now for the rest of the uh, fiscal year. Just I I understand. So you are fully reconciled through January of 2020 through the end From of July first through February of 2020. Okay, with this one adjustment to be made. Right. So okay. and I just need to understand what that adjustment is. So she left me a voicemail. I sent her a meeting. We're just playing phone tag right yeah. now. So we get the final. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's wonderful news. I don't know when you, you must have done that on like Saturday from 630 to 730, right? Uh, two Saturdays. 
Yeah. Well, I'm very. Um, <laughs> thank you to Ray and to Kelly to, to make that happen to catch up so quickly. That's great news. Thank you. Um, so I went off on my document request. Sorry about that. And thank you for, for bringing that up, Mark. Um, so unless any Board of Finance members have any other questions or comments? Yeah, I just have one other one, Natalie. Um, Jim, I didn't uh, get a chance to talk to Nicole about the annual report. Is that, where, where does that stand at this point? It's on the bottom of the pile at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, uh, we, uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about it today, but I mean, as you would expect, uh, our efforts have been elsewhere, but we certainly need to make that happen and will make that happen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any Edward's finance member comments or questions? Um, if not, we're, we're back to public comment. So again, I will ask that participants address any agenda items um, and keep their comments to one or two minutes. And I know we have people, or maybe not, if people have called in, yeah, we do have people who've called in on the phone. So um, maybe, I think we have about four people on the phone. So let's just start off by giving them an opportunity. If any of the people who called in on the phone would like to make a public comment, this would be the time to do it. Just go ahead and jump in. I'd like to comment. Are you on the phone? No, I'm on the... Okay, uh, then, I, then I will ask you to wait one minute. Let's just give these folks on the phone a chance. I'll just give them a few more seconds. Natalie, uh, someone in the chat, Doreen, has asked if she wants to, if she has an opportunity to talk. Okay, let's start with Doreen. I don't believe anybody, and, and the phone people, if you change your mind, you can talk later, but I just didn't want to forget you. So, Doreen, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Hi, this is Doreen Jesus, the library director at the East Granby Public Library, and I just wanted to take a minute to thank Jim Hayden and the Board of Finance for your continued support of the library. The benefit of shared services has been a huge help, and we'd like to thank you for continuing to recognize the importance of the library in our community. So thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Is there anybody who has not yet spoken in public comment that would like to speak? I would. Okay. I don't hear anybody. So I believe we have one person who has spoken in public comment and would like to speak again. So go ahead. Um, please identify yourself and, and tell us your thoughts. Yes, Paul Calabot from the So again, in this conversation, I see that the boards have not uh, seen what the gravity is of this economic impact on our community and it's just it's time to continue business as usual which is certainly not something that would be uh, in anybody's best interest at this time so and I, I want to say that the thing that you're going to suppress the town's vote on any kind of budget increase uh, would be a, a major mistake um, for you folks. Just because you have the power to do that, it doesn't mean you have to do that. There are many ways that the town could get input and have a vote, be it absentee voting, on any increase for the town budget that's going to be proposed. There's nothing stopping you from taking that avenue to allow all of us here in town to have a voice in this very important vote on whether or not we support an increase in our budget. So I would ask you guys, I would implore you guys to please consider that option because you don't need to take that avenue. There is nothing directing you to take that avenue. And just like the town of Granby is asking their residents right now, 
for 0% across the board um, stay on the middle rates and increases, you should do the same. To not do that would be irresponsible, and I just can't imagine that you have any conscience of what your impact is going to be. The people who are laid off, 30% of their population has no jobs. Retirement people have no increases in income. So I would implore you as human beings to take that into consideration before you do anything drastic like passing a budget without any public input. Okay. Thank you for your comment. I just want to clarify a couple of a couple of points. One is that um, this with this meeting is for purposes of receiving the um, budgets that we requested a month over a month ago now from the Board of Selectmen and Board of Ed. Um, we will be um, making a decision on what budgets to take for the public hearing um, at our next meeting in April, following the receipt of some more information sometime to, to consider the circumstances. Um, in addition to this, this form of our meetings, there is a email. I don't know the address. I'm sure Jim can look it up. But it's also uh, listed on the town website so that citizens can send any comments that they have on the budget to this email address and it will get forwarded to the Board of Finance. So that's another way that we will receive um, public comments, public uh, concerns during this unusual budget season. Um, also, the decision to have the Board of Finance adopt the budget for the upcoming fiscal year is not one that the Board of Selectmen made. It's not one that the Board of Finance made. That's a directive from the governor. There's nothing permissive in the, in the guidance. It's staff. So we will do what we've been asked to do. Um, okay, with that, if there's any other member of the public that would like to make a final comment? Okay. I'm not public, but can I okay. uh, clarify a couple of things? That's you, Jim. I think that's why we need to do the mute and everybody about me. Um, but in any event, um, with that said, sure. Okay. The um, yeah, I was slow on the mute button. Sorry. Sure, the, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, the email address, which will be on the website tomorrow, but it's an active email address for a comment for residents. The 2021 budget comment at egtownhall.com. 20 hyphen 21 budget comment at egtownhall.com. Also, uh, the uh, uh, had the town attorney look at the language from the governor regarding his uh, his uh, statement. Uh, I forget what letter and number it was regarding the um, the process that uh, took away in person. Um, in-person in meetings regarding the budget, in-person bud, uh, voting, I should say. And um, it didn't say will, it said shall. And shall means that uh, there is no argument on that. Uh, so uh, that particular uh, part of it, uh, the authority wasn't given by the Board of Finance, I mean, to the Board of Finance by the Board of Selectmen, uh, in or, or did they seek it? The, it was given uh, by the governor in his declaration and um, it, it said shall, and I got legal advice on that. Uh, it's mandatory. It's not, uh, it's not a case of uh, you can do it or not do it. Also, the, you know, the town and specifically the Board of Finance are going to do everything in their power to make sure uh, that uh, if the public hearing that people will be able to use. Uh, we'll handle the logistics the best we can, and people will be able to have comments there. They'll have comments on emails. They'll be able to get some feedback. So just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Jim. And with that, we move to item 10. McAnally. You have a motion? Always. Always. Time to go home. Second. I'll second, I'll second it. Second it. 
Bye, everyone. Okay, there's a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.